last thing we uh, left off with in 5.4 part one uh, was the properties. And now we're going to look at three more properties that are used to take logarithms and either separate them apart, or we can take two logarithms that are separate and we can combine them. So we'll, we'll look at both ways. All right, so here's our, our first property. So this property deals with having a product inside the argument. Okay, that's m times n. If you have a product okay, inside the argument, you can split that apart as a sum. Product splits as a sum. When you split it, the base on each log that you have is exactly the same as the base you started with. Your first argument is the first thing you will multiply, and the second argument, the n, is the second thing you will multiply. So here's an example with numbers. If I have log 4 times 5, and base, base can be any base you want, you could split that up into log 4 plus log 5. Let me show you how that looks. Uh, if you type it in, I'll use base 10, because that's what I have a button for on the calculator. Log 4, you do have to close the parentheses because I'm done with the first log, plus log 5. Okay, so that's what you got. Now let me type it in the original way. Log 4 times 5. And you get the same thing. Now, what's the product of 4, four times 5? 20. So what do you think a different way you could split up 20 is? And I would get the same answer besides that. I could use 10 and 2. So if I do log 10 plus log 2, I get the same thing. Any two numbers that multiply to give you 20, if you rewrite them as a sum with logs, you're going to get the same answer. You can also do log 40 plus log of a half. Yep. That's, what, that's a rule with logarithms. So a product turns into a sum. And if you had a product of three things, let's say it was log of 4 times 5 times 6, well, then you could write log 4 plus log 5 plus log 6. So you can use the property for as many things as you're multiplying. Uh, but usually we do it with two. Okay, so that's a product. The next one we're going to look at is division. When we divide two things, how do you think division is going to split? Have a, have a guess? Subtraction. Yeah, division is going to turn into subtraction. Now, with subtraction, the order is important. So it has to be the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. The base stays exactly the same as what the base was originally. What's on top comes first, what's on the bottom has to go second. And here's an example um, with numbers. Again, this property works for any base. Okay, you could have a base 10, base E, base 7. The base doesn't matter. It just has to stay the same through the whole, the whole problem. Okay, and the last, last rule is for dealing with exponents. If we had something like that. The R is an exponent there. When we have exponents in the argument to a log function, m to the r, that's the argument. The exponent's going to mess us up. Okay, we don't, we don't want to have exponents there. So the rule is you are allowed to take exponents if they are inside a log function and put them in front. You can't just take any exponent and put it in front whenever you want. It has to be 
in a log function. So here's an example with numbers. So if you had log of 3 to the 5th, you can make that 5 times log 3. gives you a way to get rid of having exponents in the problem. And that's really helpful when the exponent is a variable, because that's what makes some equations hard to solve, having a variable and an exponent. Now we don't have to have exponents. We can get rid of them if we use logs. Um, if the r was outside, would it just turn into like one of the things, like problems we were doing yesterday, where like the like four different types of like do you like the, I know like yesterday was like the properties where there was like different ones and at yeah. the end, it, would, it turn, would it be that, is that why it has to be inside of the parentheses? It changes it? Like, like why, why, it go, why it has to be inside to go yeah. in front? Um, uh, let me show you real quick. So let's say you had log of x cubed. Right. The answer to that is 3 log x. The three can go in front. But let's pretend we didn't know that rule, and I'll show you maybe this is what you're looking for. Um, what does x cubed mean? Like if you write it without an exponent of three. X times x times x. X times x times x. Okay. Now, earlier we had a rule, for, I think it was rule one, that if you're multiplying things together, when you split it, what does it turn into? Turns into what? Uh, so it was rule one that we went over today. When you have a product inside your argument and you split it apart, it turns into addition. How many things are we multiplying inside those parentheses? Three. So when we split it apart, we're going to have three. We're going to have a log, a log, and another log. What's going to be the argument to my first log? Yep, it's my first factor. And what's the argument to my second log? It's the same thing. And the third one? X. So now, if you add a log X plus another log X plus another log X, how many log X's is that? That's three of the log x's. That's why the 3 can just go in front. That's the reason. Okay. All right, now, the way you're going to see uh, a problem is it's going to either say express powers as factors or express factors as powers. What does that mean? That means if it says to express a factor as a power, that means put the number back as an exponent. If it says express powers as factors, that means do not leave a power in the answer. Take the exponent and put it in front. When you put something in front, that makes it a factor. It's not a power anymore. Okay, so that's how you'll, you'll see the directions for that. Now, let's say I said to you, don't leave exponents in the answer, and you do this. If you leave an answer like that, you left an exponent in that answer. Okay, it's hidden, but you left one there. Does anybody remember what the square root of x is? Like another way you can write it. What is it? To the half right. When you take a square root, it means to raise it to the one half power. So by leaving an answer with a square root, you've really left a hidden one half power. And now, where can that one half go? It can go in front. So that is how you would leave an answer without any exponents. Okay, if you had something like a square root. Now, if you had a cube root, um, does anybody remember what the power is for a cube root? It's a one-third. So you'd have a one-third, and that would end up in front. 
Okay, so I think that's the one that's a little bit tricky because some people see that symbol and they forget that that symbol really means you have an exponent. And I think I wrote that down. Yep, I wrote that right there in case you don't remember. <coughs> let's see. Great. Well, let's try a few uh, problems taking taking two logs that are separate. We'll combine them, and ones that are combined, and we'll we'll split them. Let's start with this one. So the directions say to separate it, and don't leave any powers in the final answer. Powers should be brought in front. Okay. Uh, so we're going to split that up. What do we have inside the argument? Is it multiplication or division? Multiplication. It's multiplication. How does multiplication split? Addition. Addition. So we're going to have two logs. What's going to be the base on each one? Four. Same as the base you started with. And my first argument? Three. And the second argument? X. That's how you split that log up. Yeah. What differentiates what um, argument goes to what one? Just like which one's on the left goes to the left log? Yeah, with addition it doesn't really matter because you, you could change the order you add these in. Okay. With subtraction it does matter. You have to put the top one first and the bottom one second. Okay. Alright, let's try this one. Okay, so log base 2 of 5r cubed. Alright, so again, uh, what are we doing inside the parentheses? Multiply or divide? We are multiplying. Okay, essentially, it's this times that. So we're multiplying two things together. That's going to split into two logs. Um, is it going to split into a sum or difference? Yeah, it's going to be a sum. Okay, the base on each log? Two. It's going to be a base 2. And my first argument would be a 5. And we don't have to simplify it yet, but what would the second argument be? It would be r to the third. But remember the direction said to put the powers in front. 3 log 2. Base R. Yeah, three log base two of R. So you can do that in two steps if you want, but you can't leave R cubed in the final answer because it said not to. Okay. Any question about that? All right. Let's try this one. Okay. So what's going on in the argument this time? That's division. Uh, when you take a log that has division in the argument, how does that split? Okay. It's going to be subtraction. Log, log. Okay, base on each log, nine. Okay. It doesn't matter what the base is. That doesn't change how you do the problem. You just whatever base you start with. If you start with nine, keep it nine through the whole problem. You start with two, use two. Yep. Uh, I'm going to show you either today or tomorrow how to do oh, it. Maybe today, yeah. Um, all right, so we get the base 9. Um, what's your first argument? And you don't have a choice. It has to be, x. Has to be the x. <coughs> Top goes first, bottom goes second. If you switch it, Think about doing like 5 minus 2 and 2 minus 5. It's not the same thing. Any question on that one? All right, let's try this one. So the first one we did was a base 4. This one's a base 2. That was a base 9. What's the base on this one? Yeah, it's log base 8. You're not going to write it as log base C. Use the abbreviation LN. But when you split it, it's just going to have an LN and another LN. 
Okay. Anyone think they could give me uh, the whole thing in one step? Yep. Ellen, Y to the third minus Ellen to the Can you fix that, Ellen, Y to the third body? Um, Remember, we cannot leave exponents in the final answer. What is it? 3LN. 3LN. Y. Yes. So it's going to be 3LN Y. If you put Y cubed, just put that in front. And then what did you say? Add or subtract there? Subtract. Subtract. And then what did you subtract? LN8. LN8. Yep. Any question on that one? Okay. So now let's try the reverse. Now, sometimes when you see a problem like this in the book, it may say off to the side, A is greater than zero. And that just means we're not dealing with imaginary logs. It doesn't change how we're going to do this at all. But if you see that off to the side, it's just letting you know that none of your variables are negative. Because if they were, it would be imaginary. Okay? So it doesn't really even matter that they say that, though. OK, so this one says express powers as factors as powers. So, so think about what you would have done to get to this. And you're going to do every step now in reverse. So what do you think um, the first thing that you're going to do is if we're going to get this all combined back together? Yep. Well, identify so subtraction addition and also log the base. Just write out log in. Okay. So yeah, we're going to have a we're going to have a single log base A when we combine it. It's multiplication. <clears throat> yep. And it is going to be multiplication. So two things are going to be multiplied together. What's the first thing that gets multiplied? Seven. Seven. And what's the second thing? Three to the power of four. This should go back as an exponent. Do you express that as being equals or just three to the power of four? Yeah, we want to do that out now. Okay. Yeah. So three to the fourth power, uh, how much is that? 81. So that's 81. And then 81 times 7, 567. <laughs> so it's 7 times 81, which comes out to 567. Uh, well, in my head, to do 7 times 81, I kind of just thought of it like this. I thought of it as 7 times 8, which is 56. And then 7 times 1, which is 7. And that was 567. That's how my brain works. And that's it. So that's that's how you combine it all back together. If you're question, yeah. Um, so when we're looking for the answer to this one, obviously when we do it the other way, it would have to be in the two, so we can actually like change it back into like the seven times the three to the four. But for these ones, are you looking for the actual like like? Combined like answer, like the 562nd. Yeah, so we want to express express it as a single logarithm, combined and simplified as much as you can. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Is it gonna are there gonna be problems where they give us something like that and we have to work it back where we split it up to then do uh, well, it would be really hard to go backwards from 567 because there might be more than one way you could get to 567 besides 81 times 7. So it would be presented the way before you divide yeah. everything? Okay. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> All right, let's try this one. Uh, let me just fix this. Okay, so it's... 2 thirds ln 8 minus the ln of 3 to the 4th minus 81. So the first thing I would do is simplify that second ln. There's no reason to leave it like that. So we just did 3 to the 4th, which was how much? Yeah. Minus 71. 10. 10. So the second one is ln 10. And 
And what do we have to do with the first one? Put put what back? Two power and two thirds. Yeah, I'm going to take two thirds and put that back as an exponent. Now, when you do eight to the two thirds, if you think of writing the fraction horizontally, you can do this one in your head. Start with this part. What's eight to the second power? Sixty-four. And then when you divide by three, that's a root. What kind of root means divide by three? Cube root. Cube root. So what's the cube root of 64? Four. It's a nice number. Four. Four. Yeah, four times four times four. So ln, and then when eight to the two-thirds power is four. Now, if it was like eight to the five-sevenths power, I mean, I, I can't do that in my head because it doesn't come out nice. But that's how you can raise a number to a fraction power. Raise it to the first, raise it to the numerator power, and then take the root of the denominator, in this case, cube root. Okay, so now we've got ln4 minus ln10. Um, how are those going to recombine? When we, it's going to recombine is division. And what would go on the top? And the bottom? 10. And what would that simplify to? You could do 0.4, or yeah, you could just say 2 fifths. So it's the natural log of 2 fifths. Any question on that one? Yeah? It's a natural log because the right side simplified to the base of 10. Or the. Uh, no, everything here is a base of E. Oh, because it's L and okay. It's because it's what they gave us in the original problem. Okay. Yeah. If they had given us a log in the original problem, I would have had a log in my final answer. If they give us an LN in the original, you're going to have an LN in the final answer. Yeah. I was thinking about a common argument. Yeah, this 10, just a coincidence that the argument is 10, doesn't have anything to do with the base. But if the base was 10, it would be a common log. If you have base 10, it would be common log. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Question on that? Right. So that was really all that was left in uh, in that part. So the first part for tonight uh, is on 292. And it's 29. Oh, 332. Okay, so part two in 5.4. So in 5.1, um, we solved a exponential growth problem. I don't know if you remember, it was like one of the last two or three problems we did. It was about a population of a town starting at 50,000 people. It was going to 100,000 people. And I think it was growing at like 2.5% a year. Okay, so that's a problem we did on, on Monday. And the way we solved it was graphically. Well, now that we know logs, I can show you how to solve it uh, without them. Okay, so that's what we'll take a look at. So this is the exact same question, if you look back in your notes. So 50,000 people, population is going to double. It's growing at 2.5%. First of all, what, what makes this exponential grow? Yeah? It's increasing at the rate of a percentage. It's increasing at a percentage. It's not like we're adding 500 people every year to the town. That, that's linear. Okay, this is exponential, so it's going to curve up fast. And the percentage tells you that it's exponential. What tells you it's growing versus decaying? Increasing, right? Population is increasing, so that's growing at an exponential rate. Okay, so first thing that we need is um, the formula to, to write this down. So I think we did population 
as a function of time. If anyone remember, when you write an exponential formula, what comes right after the equal sign? Yeah. The initial, yeah, in this case it's population, but whatever the start value is. Uh, what's our starting value here? 50,000. 50, and then in parentheses, there's two things added together. Does anyone remember what the formula was in the parentheses? It was, yeah, 1 plus R. Okay. Now, my growth rate as a percent is 2.5%. What is that as a decimal? 0 0.025. And there's one more thing we need to make this an exponential equation. Without it, it's it's not an exponential equation. Exponent of time. Time. T. Okay, so simplify that. So your population equals fifty thousand times. What are we going to simplify the parentheses to? 1.025. Okay. So there's your equation that represents what's happening. Now the next thing they want to know is when does the population hit 100,000? So you got to decide, are you plugging in the 100,000 for the t, or are you plugging it in for p of t? It's p of t. The 100,000 is not a time. 100,000 is a population of people. So the 100,000 is going to get plugged in right there. Okay, so now let's do that. 100,000 equals 50,000 times 1.025 to the t. Now, if we, were going to gra if we were going to do this on the graphing calculator, how would we solve it? Yep. Write the equations and then write the line where they uh, at 100,000 where it crosses and then find the intersection. Yeah, so put one side in y1, put the other side in y2, and then you're going to have something that looks like this. It's going to grow, and you're going to figure out exactly where they cross. Now, if you do that, I remember, just remember the answer. It was 28, I think it was 28.07 years. That was the answer when we did it. So now, we're not going to solve it graphically. We're going to try to do it algebraically. So the first thing I want to do, I want to try to get as much stuff away from the T as I can on the other side. Does anyone see I, something I could do on both sides? Won't get T by itself, but it'll get better than it is now. Yep. Divide by 50,000. Yep. You can divide each side by 50,000. So that's gone. And 100,000 divided by 50,000? Two. Two. Now, that's not a lot to that equation. Just three things, two, 1.025, and then to the t. But what makes that equation harder to solve? What, what makes it something you would never see that in Algebra 1? Because the t is the exponent. Well, we don't want to have the t as an exponent. Okay, I said earlier, exponents are going to mess us up if they're variables. So we have a rule that we can do something with this t. What are we allowed to do with, a, with the exponent? Move it to the front as long as you have what in your problem? A log. You have to have a log in your problem. Do we have a log in the problem? No. So, if you add something like this, the only way you're going to solve that is with a square root. Is there a square root in the problem the way it's written right here? No. So then make it so there is. Take the square root on each side. Now you have a square root in your problem. x equals the square root of 16. Well, you can do exactly the same thing here. Take the log of each side of your problem. Log is a function like any other function. Square root, squaring, you can do it to both sides. All right, now, what can we do with the t? Now you can put it in front. So you have log 2 equals t times the log of 1.025. Now, what would be your last step to get the t by itself? 
the log of 1.025, that's just a number. It's like saying t times 5. If you want to get rid of what you're multiplying t by, divide it on each side. So on the left. Right? That's gone. Then we get t equals, and just from graphing it, I remember it's 28.07. But let me just show you how you plug it in. When you press log and then you do 2, it opens a parenthesis for you. You have to close it. Okay, if you don't close it after the 2, it's going to come out wrong. So log 2 divided by log 1.025 and you get 28.07 and that's how many years it will take for the population to double. Um, up there above the one before you can divide it, the t is in front of the log. Is that a reason or do you just forget it? Um, where? For the um, first time you wrote log, the, the numbers. <laughs> The T is in front. Is Not yet. Oh, it's there. I see it. Okay. Yeah, the T is still the exponent. I hadn't moved it yet. Oh, okay. I that moved makes, it in the next step. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's how you solve a uh, equation that has a variable in the exponent. Okay, you take the log of each side of it. Yeah. Did you also say the log of base 1.025? And then two in parentheses equals t. Uh, yes. So there is. If you took this equation right here, well, the whole thing, and you thought about rewriting that the way I showed you, log one point zero two five is your base. <clears throat> Logarithm always equals the exponent, so that automatically gets t by itself, and the argument is what was by itself on the other side. If you know how to type that in on a calculator, that is the answer. I haven't shown you how to type in base 1.025 yet, so that's why I did it this way. Yep. But you might have an idea of how you would type this in on a calculator based on what I just did right there. You look at that, and then you look at what I have over there. Typing in something that has a base that's not a 10 or an E involves typing it in as a fraction. So if you know how to do that, you can type in any base you want on the calculator. You just have to use a fraction. Sorry. Yeah. Is that with an exponent of 2, or is that log base 1.02? No, nope, that's just log base. There's my line paper right there. Oh. Yeah. That's just a 2, not an exponent? That's just a 2. That is not an exponent. So, so you usually know, show us how to do that. Well, I, I basically did right here. That's that's how you do it. You, to type what I have circled right there on a calculator, that's exactly how you type it in. It ends up being the log of the argument and dividing by the log of the base. Could you write it as that the log of parentheses 1.025 to the square root? Log base 1.025 to the sec to yeah. in an argument of Could two. You write it like that, or no? Do you have to split it up? Put it in the calculator. Well, yeah, you have to get me a decimal for it. So I I need the answer 28.07. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah, that's what I need. Yep. You can. I believe you can. I don't know if you can or not, but if you do alpha f2 and five. Yes. Five for log base? Five for log base, yes. So on my calculator, that will work. And maybe even on yours. Oh, Not on those. Oh, that one we we got to pay extra for that one. We didn't pay, the, we didn't get premium. Oh, you only get that with premium. Yeah. Alright, so any question on how we got... 28.07? Yeah. So, uh, because you're dividing them, that means that the base of the log here is a power, right? Like, because, like, right here? They're both uh, common logs, which means they're base 10. They are both base 10, yeah. And because you divided them, that means that the base, like, cancels out. 
The whole thing cancels. The log with the base. This this entire thing is gone. Yeah. Yeah. So the log of the argument divided by the log of the base is equivalent to what? What's, what's the what's the answer called? Is it? It's called the change of base formula, which I'm, we're not really getting into right now. But that's important just for finding. Think what again exactly? It's important to when you have to find logs that are not a base 10 or a base E, but you don't need that formula to do it. It is a shortcut. Uh, but if you can, if you understand like what I did right here, taking the log of each side, putting the T in front, and then dividing by it, that will give you the answer. So all you need to understand is what's right here. If you don't, I ask me, we'll, you know, we'll look at it again. And that's just to find the variable? That's to find the variable, yep. Okay. So here's here's another simple one, like two, um, let's do it like this, two to what power gives me 10? Well, that's not an easy question because two to the third power is eight, two to the fourth power is 16. So it's going to be two to the three point something. What makes this equation annoying to work with? Yeah. The variables in the exponent, all right? So don't have the variable in the exponent. Move it in front. But to move it in front, what does your equation have to have? Logs. It has to have logs. Take the log of each side. Okay. Now, what can you do with the x? Now you can put the x in front. Can you just shut that one? So now you can put the x in front. And what would be your last step to get the x by itself? Divide both sides, sides by log 2. So let's see what that comes out to. That should be the power that you have to raise the number 2 to, so to get 10. In that this, in this situation, would 2 be a base 10? Log 10. Divided by log 2. 2 is the argument. So if you raise 2 to the 3.32 power, it should come out to about 10. 9.99. So now you should be able to solve a simple equation that has a variable in the exponent just by taking the log of each side and then putting the exponent in front. Um, the way I did it here, yeah. so the way when I took the log of each side, the 2 to the x became the argument on the left, and the 10 became the argument on the right, because I have two logs, one on each side. Oh, when I divided it? So the base here, it's a 10. I didn't write it because I don't have to. So the base is a 10, and then this argument was a 2, and that argument was a 10. Just a coincidence, these numbers were the same. It's because I picked the number 10 on this side. That's why that happened. Any other question on, on that one? Okay. Okay. So Sometimes you might have like a scatter plot, right, like this. And you try to find a, a line that goes through them, you know, the best that it, the best you can. Okay, if you draw it by hand, that's called a line of fit. Okay, it's just an estimate. I didn't calculate the slope or the intercept. I just did the best I could to try to find a line. Well, if you want to use the calculator, you can find what's called the line of best fit. That's a line that goes through the points, and it's the best line you can possibly come up with. The calculator finds the perfect slope and intercept to go right through the middle the best it can. Now, if you had something like this, would a line be a good tool to model those points? Not a straight line. What's that? Not a straight line. Is there any other kind? I mean, 
Not in that. No, I didn't. A line. Well, if it, so if it turns, then it's some kind of curve. Yep. And that's what we're going to use here. Okay, so we're going to use a curve that would look something like this to fit the data. Um, there's all kinds of curves. Okay, there's parabolas, those are curves. Um, exponentials, okay, those are curves. We're going to look at what's called a power curve or a power function. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you on the calculator, if you have a set of data that it says to model with a power function, I'm gonna show you how, how you do it. So this is purely gonna be a calculator thing. It's not, um, there is a way you can do it by hand. Obviously if the calculator can do it, it's gonna be a way to do it. Um, but we don't, we don't look at how to do it by hand. Right, so first thing, let me show you where um, the power function is on calculator. Okay, when you're finding a, like an equation that fits a set of data, okay, like a curve or a line, that's something that's under the statistics button okay, on the calculator. So the stat button is the third one over and second one down from the upper left. And the power model, the calculator calls it a power regression. That's what REG stands for. So it's all kinds of regressions, quadratic regressions, that's, those are parabolas, cubic, quartic, natural log regression, exponential regression, power regression. Uh, went to stat and then calc. So on my calculator it's option A. So when we do a power regression, that's what we're going to be looking for. PWRREG. Okay, power function, power equation, power regression, same. Now, it might be quicker when you press stat and you go to calc. I think it's actually faster to go up because then it'll bring you back to the bottom and you can get to A faster. Okay, you can also press down, but it's like the 11th, 10th or 11th option down. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to use. Calculate power model on the calculator. Okay, well, the first step is you have to put in the data. Okay, they're going to give you points as coordinates. So let's do that first. So put in the data. To do that, you're going to go uh, stat, and then you're going to go to edit. It's going to be stat and then edit. So let's um, let's let's do that. Okay, let's do it as as we kind of go here. Let me give you some data. Directions for this are going to be just find a power model. That's all. Find a power power model, power function. Okay, find an equation that's a power function. Same thing. Okay, so we have to put that data in. So we're going to go to stat. And we're going to go to edit. If you already have numbers that are in there, um, the easiest thing to do is just highlight the top one and then just press delete. And that'll get rid of it. Okay. So in L1, you always want to put the x values. In L2, we're going to put the y's. Now, 
if you don't do it that way, it's okay. But it's going to add more steps later on. So I would put the X's in L1 and put the Y's in L2. Just like that. So there's my X's. Uh, press the right arrow, okay, and that'll bring you over to L2. And then type in all your Y's. Okay, if you make a mistake like I did, uh, and you hit enter, you can just go back up to the number, highlight it, and you can just type right over it. All right, that's the first step. I'm going to type type in all the data by going stat and then going to edit. Okay, any question on typing in the data? All right, so step, step two. We're going to go back to stat. Step two is to calculate the equation. So you press stat, but this time we're not going to go to edit unless you made a mistake and you need to fix it. We're going to press the right arrow and we're going to go to calc. Now on my calculators, it is option A. Okay, but if you're using a different calculator, it could be a different option. So I'm going to write down the name of it. You're looking for the one that says power regression. That's the one you want to pick. Okay, so this is all to calculate the equation that we need. So once you're on option A, uh, you just hit enter. And notice it picked two lists, two lists of numbers in the calculator to automatically be the X's and the Y's. What list did it pick for X? It picked the L1, and for the Y's it picked it picked the L2. That's why I said to put them there. If you had put them in a different list, let's say you used L3, you can change it. Okay. But if you put them where I recommended, you won't have to change it. So second, let me put it back the way it was. Right, so everyone's calculator should look like that. And now you're going to go down to calculate and hit enter. Calculate and hit enter. Okay, so hit enter. And it gives us a formula. So power model always looks something like um, I know I had it somewhere. Oh, right here. It's going to look something like this. Y equals, you have to write Y equals and then you have to put in the number the calculator tells you for A and the number it tells you for M. You don't have to do anything with the Y and the X. The Y and the X stay in your final answer. Just the A and the M. Now, the calculator may not call it A and M. The calculator calls it A and B. It's still the same. It's the same thing. Now, we want to round it appropriately. Generally, rounding to two decimal places is enough. So if you round A to two decimal places, what what does A really come out to? A is 5. And B, well, it's 1.6. The 6 repeats 5 times. If it repeats that many times, we can assume it would just keep repeating. Remember, this is just an estimate. If it really knew what it was doing, it would have just said A equals 5. Now, B, what number does that look like? One and two thirds. One and two thirds. Okay, 0.6 repeating is two thirds. If it repeats that many times, you can just assume that the calculator should have kept repeating it, but it doesn't know how to really do it the way we can do it in, you know, by hand. So just estimating. So that number is really one and two thirds, which is what is an improper fraction. Uh, 
Five. So now you have the A and the B. We're going to write our final answer. Let's go. Okay, so we calculated, hit calculate, hit enter, and now write the final answer. Okay, so in our case, the final answer it tells you exactly how to do it. Y equals, and what number are we going to fill in for A? Five. Five. And what number do we fill in for B? Five X to the five grades. Yep. And that should be the equation of the points, that, the equation of the line that goes right through our points. Well, let's see. So when we look at our table, what's the smallest x value? And the biggest? Okay, so x's go from 1 to 8. I want to be able to see that on the screen. So I would think 0 to 10 is good. So I'm going to set my window 0 to 10. And then what's the largest and smallest y value? Right, so I'd go 0 to 200. So we'll set our y 0 to 200. 0 to 200. Now, if you hit graph, it's not going to do anything. We, we didn't tell it to, to draw the points. So under y equals, you shouldn't have any equations typed in yet. Press the up arrow. That highlights plot 1. That means it's going to graph points that we just put in the calculator. So highlight plot 1, and then hit Enter. Now, if you press graph, you should see the points from the table. Okay. Does everybody see those points on their calculator? Mm -hmm. um, let me see. And you typed in the same number of x's and y's in each column. They're labeled, but I just changed the label on like, the staff thing, and it went back by to give the same numbers for the oh. Um, yeah, I think we have to use L1 and L2 as the labels, so we're going to have to fix that. Okay, okay anyone else didn't get those points? Okay, now let's type in that equation, and if that equation is right, it's going to look like it goes right through the points. If it's not, then we messed something up. So 5x raised to the 5 thirds. That's how I would type it in. 5x to the 5 thirds. Hit graph. Does it look like that goes right through the points? Yep. So we found the, the perfect curve that goes right through those points. Now, it might not always be perfect. It depends on your data. If that point was a little lower to start with, then it might not have been as nice of a fit. But I'm going to give you one that's going to be a really good fit like that. So there will be one problem on the test that's pretty much that. Okay, I'll give you a table, and then you're going to have to type the data in, and then calculate the power regression, and then write your final answer. Remember, final answer has to have y equals. Every final answer starts like this. If you don't put the y equals, you only get a half because it's an equation. You've got to have an equal sign in there. And then the right-hand side, well, you got to figure out what number goes in that box and what number goes in that box. And that's what the calculator will tell you. Okay. Any uh, questions on that? Yeah. Could you go back to the little list of like um, the steps for determining if um, the answer fits? Um, yeah, there was one thing I skipped that you didn't need. Um, you need these steps. So like if you've got if you've got this, that that's what you need. How to calculate a power model on the graphing calculator. 
That's that's the only steps you need. And then before that, I just showed you the formula for the power model itself. Okay. That's all. That's all that I showed. You. Yeah. How do I clear up the little table afterwards? So, um, to clear that, you want to get rid of everything you typed in. Yeah. All the points. Get rid of. So if you go to stat, and well, there's two ways to do it. There's only four points in the list, so I can press delete four times. Okay. It's not going to take that long. Yeah. Or if you want to clear an entire list, let's say you have 200 points. I don't want to press delete 200 times. I can go to option four, which will clear a list, but I have to tell it which list I want to clear. I want to clear second one. That'll clear L1. And I think I can do comma and do second two. And I think it'll clear two lists at the same time. How do you do a comma? Uh, comma is right below the sign button, above the setup. So now, by typing in clear list, if you go to stat and you go to edit, now my lists are gone. What's the button for clear? To clear the list, um, stat, and then mine is option four. Wow. Now, somebody's messed up, their, their list got messed up. Um, I think if you go, uh, I don't know, I'll try to help you get your list back. So what can happen is if you go to edit, and you accidentally press delete on L2. Well, now you have a problem. Now you just deleted L2, and we need it back. So one way to get it back is to press second and the plus sign. And we're just going to reset the entire calculator back to the way it was when you, know, you opened it. So if you press second, the plus sign, and you press seven, and we want to reset everything. So we're going to press 1, and then it just warns you that it's going to re erase everything that's on the calculator. If it's one of mine, it doesn't really matter. Press reset. It turns everything back, even the brightness. Because when you buy it, the brightness isn't all the way up. So now I have to put the brightness back up. All right, I'll do that later. It's going to take forever. Um, but if you go to stat and you go to edit, see my L2 is back up. Yeah. Okay. So if you got stuck on a test where you accidentally deleted L2, that's something I would help you fix on the test. But if you said, I don't remember the button to do a power model, I would not tell you that. That you have to know how to do. But if something weird happens and the calculator messes up, I could help you fix that. That equation, is A always going to be a whole number and B always going to be a fraction? Um. Or do you no. always have to make me a fraction if the situation arises? No, it could, they could be fractions or whole numbers, either one of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's page 292 and 293. So it's the same section as last night. So let me write that down. Same, it's the same PDF you used yesterday. It's not a new one. Same PDF as yesterday. Okay, so 29 to 32. 35, 36, 43, 46, and 48. Okay, if you saw, I erased the page 301. That's the homework for tomorrow. Page 30, that's page 301. But we'll, we'll end that one tomorrow.